Welcome to another chill session. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode of my podcast. And today I am having what's supposed to be coffee, but I'm having uh, two, two large bottles of water with a legend, a uh, business mentor of mine, Daniel Priestley. We are sitting in London at Home House and we're sitting in the garden. It is one of the best days I've seen in London in a long time. So we decided to take this one outside. Uh, first of all, hi Daniel, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Daniel is a very successful entrepreneur. He's an international speaker, best-selling author. He's a husband, he's a father, and he's the co-founder, CEO, and director of Intrivo. Intrivo is a company helping entrepreneurs and leaders to stand out, scale up, and build small global businesses. All global small businesses. Yeah. Um, I've been a client of yours. Yep. Uh, when was it? When? 2008. It's a while, it's a while maybe. ago. Yeah, yeah. 2008, 2009. When did you write your book? 2010. There you go. So it was around. So you must have done that the year before. Yes. Was that five years ago? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, my first book. Yeah, now. your first book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it must have been 2010 that you were, you did the KPI program. You yeah. would have been in one of our first groups. Yeah. We K- had KPI two. I was. Yeah, in. KPI two. Mm. So we went out to in London. We're up to KPI 17. That's just crazy. Yeah, and uh, we, we're up to KPI 12. Something tells me that's a successful model. Yeah, we've had 1,500, <laughs> 1500 people come through the program uh, worldwide. So, well, you know, you're in Singapore, Australia. Singapore, Brisbane US. City, Melbourne, USA, um, London. So. Can, can you say what's next? Is there another country you're looking at? Uh, you're looking yeah, at South so, Africa? Uh, well, we're just about to launch Perth, uh, fourth city in Australia. Um, we're not necessarily looking at South Africa directly, but um, someone wants to take us down there. Um, we're probably going to go and launch New York sometime soon. So, I oh, think so just sticking within the country's yard, uh, just branching out. I actually really like the idea of having a head office in New York, London, Singapore, Sydney, which is kind of like got a cool ring to it. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel, you're also a multiple author. Yep. You're the author of Key Person of Influence, Entrepreneur Revolution, yeah. and your latest book, which in my opinion is by far your best book. Really? Yeah, oversubscribed. oversubscribed. Absolutely love it. I recommend it to some of my clients who are just in, in just in business in general. If they are running their own business, actually, yeah. you know what? It's, it should even be for people well, who employ uh, easy. Yeah, even, some like. big companies have, have been buying it, um, and like marketing executives and and um, uh, sort of. It has actually found a market with big companies as well as small companies, actually. Yeah. So yeah. So I, it was a. It was basically for two years. I got fascinated, really fascinated, by any business that had a lineup or a waiting list, um, or was openly charging quite a premium. And um, in a world of technology and transparency, there's no real reason why anyone should line up for anything or wait for anything. No, it makes no sense. Because you can, if you go to a restaurant that's full, you should just look on your app and look on the, you know, Google Maps and find the next best restaurant just down the road. But people don't do that. They um, fall in love with certain brands and they line up and and uh, they join waiting lists and do all that sort of stuff. So I became fascinated, wanted to learn. Um, and and it's a collection of stories. In fact, you're one of the stories in the book. Yeah. Um, so I'm plugging it for two reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People open up the book and they go, wait a minute, <laughs> JP's one of the stories in here. And thanks to your dad, Andrew Priestley, there's a nice there's little a nice cartoon, cartoon of, of you. Yeah. <laughs> what does it say? Something like, are you, are you, do you earn something like 400K? Are you fat yeah. and I'm yeah. fat? Yeah. Come exactly. see me. Come see JP. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another thing that you're massively involved in. Obviously, you're an author, you're a speaker, you speak all around the world. Mm-hmm. You know, I see you always traveling. Uh, I'm very grateful for the fact that you're able to take the time out to see me today oh, because as am I busy, I know you are incredibly busy. But nothing you're very much involved in, and it's at the forefront of your business, is the KPI or the key person of influence method. Yeah. Uh, you have all different you know, levels of that, the indicator, the book, uh, yep. which is your first yep. book, and but then the main thing is your KPI program. Yep. It's obviously the program that I came through. For people listening to this, what, what, how would you sum up the KPI program? So in every industry, there are key people of influence. They earn more money, have more fun, attract opportunities. Um, they're good at what they do, but more importantly, a lot of people know that they're good at what they do, um, and they know how to communicate the value of what they do. So we 
work with people who are already very good at what they do and they can provide great value and then we help them to stand out as a key person of influence. Um, so we cover five things, which is how they pitch their business um, and how their team pitches the business, uh, how the publish, how they uh, communicate what they do through published content. So a lot of our clients write books, articles, blogs and reports. Um, how they turn what they know into products and service ecosystems. So most businesses either have a product or a service, and what we do is we actually help people to identify product and service opportunities yeah. and, and to have more products and services. Um, and then raising profile, so getting known in the media, um, speaking, at, speaking thing. events. Yeah. yeah, PR, getting out there. Yeah, uh, and, and just having that standout cut-through brand. Uh, and then the fifth thing is to choose the right partners and to partner with the right people and, and associate with all the, you know, the right... It's what you call the money step, right? The money step, yeah. yeah. Well, and it really is because, you know, someone woke up this morning and they already have a database of 10,000 potential clients for you or they already have a podcast that's being listened to yeah. people. They already have, you know, products that solve problems that you could be selling to your clients. So when you start partnering, you actually leverage other people's time and effort and energy um, and you create win-win results for yourself and your clients and their clients, and and um, uh, and it, you know it is the money step because because it's leverage. But normally it doesn't happen for people who are not already key people of influence, which is why we focus on the first four things before yeah. we get get to that. Yeah, because no one wants to partner with you or do JVs with you if you don't have if you can't assets, pitch your business and you can't and, pitch your yeah. business. And I mean, for me, it was so instrumental in my growth doing those five things. You now, powered through it. You, I mean, you wrote your book. I powered through everything. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you wrote your book, and it was a great book. Uh, you, and actually, I, I did an ebook before. You know, and that already lifted lifted my. I, it blows my mind too because you were working so many hours when you were writing your book mm. and you were recording little chapters in between workout sessions with clients and just getting them transcribed and it was such a great get shit done approach to, yeah. to, to the thing. So many people have hit me with excuses about, oh, I haven't got time to write. And I say, well, JP was doing 14 hour days yeah. <laughs> and he found Actually, you know what I did and this is, you're absolutely right. There's no, I always say to my clients, you can always, you can have excuses or results, you can't have both. Yeah. And for a while, for the first month, I was having excuses. And then I just thought, you know what, you can't be a hypocrite here. If you're telling people to fucking take action, you got to take action. Mm -hmm. So I actually hired someone to hold me accountable. And I actually did the transcribing live. Mm. So I sat with someone while they freaking typed and they said, right, okay, what, this is next thing you want to talk about. Because during the day, I would yeah. write down, what's the chapters? Yeah. What are the chapters going to be of the book? What am I going to speak about? What do I want my clients to know yeah. if I was writing this for a client? And then I'd sit down with her and I would just talk. Yeah. And then she'd have to type it out. They're and brilliant. I'd pay her for it. And it's but a great I, little book. You know how long it took me? A month. A month. I yeah. wrote my book in a in month. In a month. By just getting and it probably else cost me, uh, with the investment in having someone do it for me, was five hundred pounds, and then yeah, a couple and of a couple of grand to get the book published. Yeah, and but then as I mean, a result, thousands of people know who you are and you know, follow what you do. Five, we just said five years ago. Now, because yeah. my first book came out, yeah. and still today, I mean, someone just sent me a picture yesterday of, re of reading the book, reading my book in the park. It's yeah. incredible. It's yeah. a great book. Um, and then I remember you putting on your. Um, Launch event with celebrity people you you know yeah. celebrities that you'd trained and they all showed up and um, that's how I roll yeah and you, <laughs> you won you won the major awards with London yeah. Lifestyle Awards so I mean just within that experience you just took every single thing that we were sort of suggesting and just maximised it and did it and it was great and that's yeah. that's one of the reasons you just sort of busted I mean, through you, you you used the process which was great that's the thing if anyone it doesn't matter what you do. And I'm very fortunate because I've been through the process. I can then coach my clients in the same process or convince them to come to one of your events mm. or to do your program, which some of them have. But if anyone does it, they sort out their pitch, uh, they publish anything, mm -hmm. anything, but just keep publishing, putting our content there, out into the world, working on your profile, uh, what's the other one, uh, product, and, and get partnerships. Mm -hmm. You can take any business and make an extraordinary. You any certainly? ordinary yeah. business. But you, yeah, you certainly take it to the next level. But it's not just the whole business. It's like every product within your business, you can have the same thing. Yeah. So what's the pitch for that? You know, if you're going to write one book, you can have a pitch for the book. Pitch for the book, yeah. Uh, all, all of it sort of fractals out against, exactly, yeah. against the other things. Yeah. Products for the book. And I, fries, I suppose whatever. the frustrating thing for a lot of high performers is they have stuff that is mostly done but not done. 
and the program is a catalyst for them getting things complete. Do you remember my story about the folder on my computer? Yeah, they yeah. called my book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, before, I, before I met Daniel, I had a folder on my computer that said my book. Yeah. And I had it for two years. Yeah. And it was an empty, empty Word empty. document. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I remember I trekked, uh, I trekked the Great Wall in China and I decided after my experience there that I was going to write a book. And I was convinced. And on the plane back, took out my laptop. I remember I was on the left-hand yeah. side of the plane, uh, window seats. And I was like, right, I'm going to start this book. I'm going to give, this, give this the gonna, file a name. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad, uh, we, I'm glad so, we got you a little further. Yeah, luckily I didn't call it my book when it eventually came out. But yeah, so I mean, if anyone wants to know more about the KPI course, you know, I'll send links and stuff yeah. with this uh, podcast and on the YouTube video. But obviously, people can find it online. I think yeah. you go to keypersonofinfluence.com. Keypersonofinfluence.com. There's about 50 authors who are writing content and blogs about that journey. Um, there's lots of great content there. Everything from podcasting and uh, you know all the all the different pieces on on the journey um yeah that's amazing anyone that wants to do that you can just go check out the links it's high high value if you can make it to one of their uh, brand accelerator events you still call them brand accelerator events um, yeah although we've cancelled a couple of them um lately and the reason we cancelled them is because we actually are totally full with clients um, we used to run those events as a branding strategy to to, to get clients, to get clients. Uh, and now we actually have too many clients so through referrals. So you'd say you're f- uh, oversubscribed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, funny how that happens. Yeah. I, I should write a book about that. Yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, that's all very inspiring. And obviously the, the, the focus on this podcast is inspiring people with inspiring stories. But it's not actually why I wanted to interview you. Okay. The reason why I wanted to get you on the show was because you came here with nothing more than a credit card and some contacts from, where's it from, where are you from? Clapham. <laughs> <laughs> from Australia. Yeah. You um, came here from Australia. Yeah. But you had some success. Before we get into that story, you had a little bit of, or you had a lot of success I, well, in I'd Australia. Had, I'd, had a, um, I'd had a pretty interesting sort of start to my entrepreneurial career in Australia. Launched a business at 22, 21, 22. I did a million dollars in its first year. Doing? Uh, we're doing event marketing and management. So we were the outsourced event marketing and sales team for a number of companies uh, but we generated over a million dollars ourselves in sales uh, in our own revenues incredible um, and then we built that up <clears throat> we we're making uh, literally a million dollars a month in sales uh, by year three and then I got out of that the following year and said I want to go travel and my business coach at the time said um, why don't you do a challenge? Uh, see if because he had asked me wh- when was my happiest moment, and I said during startup. And he said, "Why don't you do a challenge? Set yourself a challenge to start with a, nothing more than a suitcase and a credit card in a city that you've never been to." So incredible. So, uh, so yeah, look, came came to London in 2006. Suitcase, credit card. Um, arrived in June. Uh, launched in September. Uh, and had done close to two million pounds worth of business in the first 12 months. Uh, built the business up to about a four million pound revenue business. What was the one reason you were able to do that? Making campaigns and promotions. Yeah, campaigns, promotions, and, and they were the catalyst for the, the connections that we made. So um, I ran dinner parties, I got really great people behind us, uh, lots of partnerships. Um, and I, you know, the way I maxed out my credit card, because I only had a credit card, was I threw these dinner parties with 25 to 50 people at a time where I would pick up dinner, um, but it was designed to get partners engaged and position me as a key person of influence. And what were you pitching then? We were launching a product um, which was a uh, psychometric profiling tool for entrepreneurs and leaders and, um, and a training program that went alongside it. And basically we were, we were talking about it, we were launching it, we were getting partners to promote it. Um, they did promote it, um, and we, we blitzed it. So what, what product was this? Wealth Dynamics. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I launched Wealth Dynamics <laughs> here in the UK. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm a star creator. There you go, me too. <laughs> uh, create, a, create a star. Yeah. Oh, I don't know the difference. Is the difference star creator? Oh, creator primary star? and secondary. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I'm, cre- yeah, I'm creator star. There you I go. I just call it. Same. Left, left to right, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's incredible. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, very, very cool. That's how I first actually got connected with you. Really? First, first, first. Oh, well, you held you a, an event, uh, my first kind of, I guess, 
Business Accelerator event and Roger Hamilton was yeah. speaking. You were the host. Yes. And it was after that that I took my Wealth Dynamics profile. Well, that's, that's what we did. We I rocked up and launched that product. Lazo dragged me down. <laughs> yeah, that was the start of it all. He said you should come to this event. It was, called, it was called Make It Big in 2010 or something like there that. There go. That was, yeah, late two, December 2009. That oh, was, was it? Yeah. yeah. That event was on. Yep. And wow. we had James Kahn from Dragon's Day. Yeah. Oh, he was amazing. Yeah, it's the only was... time I've ever seen him speak, and I was yeah. truly inspired by him. Yeah. I think yeah. we had John Martini as well or something yeah. like that. So. What a gent. Uh, incredible. And now, yeah, you've just built an incredible business, international business. What's next? So we have a vision to be you know, a, you know, a global business. Um, the mission of the company is to uh, see a world where entrepreneurial people solve more meaningful problems and, um, and to empower thousands of people or, or to encourage or inspire or highlight, showcase uh, entrepreneurial people who solve meaningful problems. So for me, um, I, I kind of just have a philosophy of just letting that unfold. You know, I get creative and I, I just keep focused on that and find ways every day to help entrepreneurial people solve meaningful problems. We've got a great model that works in cities. Um, we slowed down city expansion when I had my first um, son yeah. and, um, and I couldn't <laughs> fly around and just sort of rock up in a city for three months at a time. Right. Um, but we're now geared up to you know, start launching cities all over the world again. Um, we're also just focusing a lot on digital. Um, so we built a community of uh, authors. People I actually have, saw that yesterday. Yeah. And you should be on it. You should. We should get you blogging on it because it's it's basically people who are highly skilled, highly talented, who are key people of influence at what they do, sharing the journey of how they're I'd doing. I'd be happy it. to contribute. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, and we can just sort of share some of the chapters in your book. So yeah, so we're doing that, um, and you know we're launching um, uh, key person of influence within corporate, uh, so big companies can encourage entrepreneurial people to solve more meaningful problems and develop key people of influence within their big companies. I think that's fantastic. I think that's an excellent move. Yeah, so we, we're doing that. We're, um, uh, so we're, we're also being focused on getting some of our clients funding. So uh, we've helped clients raise millions and millions of dollars now uh, for the expansion and growth of their um, products. Um, and you know, so we've selected, hand-selected a few clients who have very investable businesses yeah. and helped them to raise, you know. Uh, what type of funding? Uh, normally VC Series A round, so it's that two million pounds and above yeah. kind of funding. Um, there's a lot of angel networks and um, SEIS kind of networks for smaller investment, but for the clients who want two million pounds and up, we, uh, you know, we've got a good network now who can who can raise that sort of money. Amazing. You're just contributing on every level. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, you, got, uh, you just deliver. That's we, what business we, is we about. Did the, right? We just did a giving report, and the giving report showed, you know, we'd packaged in uh, donations into a whole bunch of our products and just built it into the product, and we raised about £500,000 over five years. That's incredible. So that was I'm cool. all about contribution. Like, the more I achieve in my life, the more I'll give. That's for certain. Yeah. And, it, and, and you, it's circular. You can't help but... I love what you did for your birthday. What did you... Something about water... Is it water aid, or what's it called? Yeah, so for my birthday... And I, anyone can do this, by the way. Anyone can do it. It's a charity called Charity Water, and they... Um, uh, they just encourage people to rather than get their friends to buy a bottle of wine or a drink or, or you know, for their birthday, just say, if you would happily buy me a cocktail for my birthday, just <laughs> donate some, you know, $10 to my charity water page. That, yeah. And it, it blew me away. It added up to, so I put mine on Facebook and it added up to $4,000 that, that got contributed. And ra when you think about it, you know, I could have had a big party and had a big hangover but I decided to just yeah. put all that energy into fundraising and $4,000 digs, you know, digs you know, wells in Africa. You know what I love about that idea is that obviously your birthday, well for me, is celebrate, you're celebrating your life, right? Yeah. And it, they always say that when you're on your deathbed, mm. you're always going to ask, what difference did I make in the world? Yeah. So to know that on your birthday you can give back as opposed to receiving is well, fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and for, for me, I'm stupidly lucky you know, just to be born in the right time, the right place, with the right parents, uh, you know, who are supportive and, uh, you know, um, nice people and and uh, and most people don't get even the, the basics. Um, 
So for me, I sit there and I go, I don't need anything more for my birthday. Actually, often every year I feel embarrassed when people give me things because I sit there and I go, I, I really I do have everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, need. I, don't, I don't need any or want anything else. So I'm really happy to, to do yeah. the charity thing. Um, that's incredible. Do you have a, an electric car? <laughs> I don't have any car. I haven't had a car for 10 years. You know what, actually? People always this, ask this, me, what, what car do you drive? And it's like, I this live reminds in me of, I'll tell you what, this reminds me of something. That a conversation you and me had at a bar um, a couple of years ago. Mm. And it actually stuck with me. And I tell this story a lot. And I live my life by it. I once asked you, why don't you have things? Things, yeah. And you said to me, well, you know, JP, I had all the things when I was younger. And then one of my mentors, I can't remember if this is the right story, but you said something like, I asked him that question, why don't you have things? And, you, and he said to you, because I want to feel light. Yeah, light. The, the greatest luxury is the, uh, is the feeling of being light. I'll tell you what, Daniel, that was transformational for me because I wanted all the things. And when I realized, actually, the uh, only thing I want is experience after experience after experience. Yeah. I mean, now... Uh, you know, if for anyone that's lis- listening to this that doesn't already know, I live in Ireland, I work in London, Thailand, South Africa. Yeah. I just tra- I travel with a bag. I can pick up and go whenever I want. I can tell you, my experience um, from making money very young is uh, at 24, I bought myself a BMW X5, fully optioned. I had a, I had a massive house. Um, I actually had two cars. I had a racing V8. Uh, um, so not an Aussie thing to do. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, and... Um, and I had uh, I had the BMW X5, and um, you know, and I ha- I'm buying stuff, right? And everything you buy that you own requires energy. Everything. Um, I, so, for example, I have just the little things. I have a couple of luxury watches. Yeah. And the stupid thing is because they're mechanical watches, you have to wind them, or else they lose the time, and then you have yeah. to reset them, and then you have to get them serviced, and um, and you sit there and you go, owning things on any level, basic level, more advanced level, requires, requires energy. Requires energy. It has to be wind- you have to yeah. wind those things. So cars require servicing, um, houses require maintenance. Um, you know, stuff requires energy. And and when I when I came to London and I had a suitcase and a credit card, I felt incredibly light and it was great. It was wonderful. And um, and I, I just live light. Uh, so I don't have a car because uh, I use Uber. And you can hire a car if you need it. Well, my, fia- my, my partner has a car. Yeah. So she... Oh, so that's Elena's car. Yeah. <laughs> so Elena's got a car. She, yeah. um, you know, so if we need a car, she, we just use her car. But, um, but I personally, think about, I mean, living in London. You jump in an Uber. You don't have to find parking. Yeah. You don't Are you ha- plugging for Uber right now? Yeah, I'm, I guess <laughs> they're I am. a partner of yeah, yours. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, I, ha- I just happily just don't own stuff, and I love not owning stuff, yeah, and I love not too. having stuff. I, I have a few things, like I have a couple of watches. Necessities, but, yeah. But not even. Necessary. I actually, I believe that the whole world is turning to renting, because everyone wants to be light, and everyone's going to be living a global life. So you just you, on the days that you want something, you want, you it, want then, it, and exactly, and, and then, you can do that with anything exactly. almost now, like, even you know. I'd, I've got a friend of mine who owns houses all over the world yeah. and he, he told me about he had this amazing time in the snow and he bought a massive chalet because he had such a great time so his experience of going to the snow used to be that he'd fly in to the snow and um, he would uh, turn up they'd turn the keys on the chalet have an amazing week and then lock the door and forget about it And then he thought to himself, oh, I've had such an amazing experience in the snow, I'm going to buy this big chalet. So he bought this massive chalet, ski in, ski out, you know, 10 bedrooms, saunas and all that sort of stuff. So now, when he arrives in the snow, the first day of being there is meeting with all the maintenance people to fix all the things that are broken, (laughs) right? And then um, managing the, you know, talking to the management team, talking to the people who rent it out for him. And then he... He's managing by about, all the time. By basically, by about day two, he can relax and go for a, a ski and relax and enjoy himself. And then the last couple of days are spent organising the, the next 12 months of what yeah. he's going to get done and the maintenance that's going to happen. And basically, his first couple of days and his last couple of days are now just doing it. And then all through the year, 
he's on the phone fixing this and fixing that. And he said to me several times, I had more, much more fun when I just used to rent it for a week. And, um, and now I own the thing. I spend half my time maintaining it, and then it's no fun. Yeah, um, no, I get that totally. Yeah. Well, there you go. Rent more, own less. Or no, stop being heavy and live light. I'm all, live I'm light. All it's the greatest luxury. Light. Yeah, I really, really love it. And like I said, it was inspired by you. That conversation we had two years ago. And I just got rid of everything. And I just, I don't, the thing is, it wasn't even getting rid of stuff. It was just, I don't have the want yeah. for things. Yeah, if I want, if I want to get a really nice car and drive it, I'll hire one. You can just hire one. Yeah. And then you can have the experience of having a really nice car for a couple of days. Yeah. Actually, what I was paying on my car because it was a convertible was ridiculous. The insurance. Yeah. 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 Like I could, I could hire a probably a Ferrari a couple of times a yeah. year just yeah. just for the day, just, just for, for the, the fun day. of it. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, I don't need a car. There's Uber and there's planes. Yeah. Um, that's been amazing. Thank you, uh, thank you, Daniel, so much for your time so far. I don't want to go. Um, I don't want to go over the time on this episode, but just to go back to your last book, like I said, uh, it was the best book that I've read out of the three books. I mean, they were all fantastic, but this one really, so that one hit the yeah, really, really, really took it to you. And I actually, uh, no, we're good, thanks. Um, I actually saw you had a, a bad review about your book. They're saying that, and I'll openly say this uh, because I'm just going to back up why it's such a such a good book and someone said oh I don't understand why everyone likes this book it's all the same from other books whatever uh, but what you've basically done so well is you've taken what works and other, that other people talk about and you've put it in a system Yeah. and you've put it in a system that if literally like all the other books or like a key person of influence if you do every step in your book then yeah then you can get the, the result the other thing too that I, I you know the comment I would make to that person if I saw them is <laughs> Well, I think you did. That, I think you did is already. That, is, is that core principles are actually more powerful than the new in vogue thing? There you go. So there are certain core principles that the deeper you can run on core principles, then you can apply those to all areas of business and all areas of life. And um, often people who are searching for the next thing, are co- you know, it's exactly. just it's, they're missing the deeper principle as to why it's the next thing, and hence they're always on the back foot and they never get ahead. People who get ahead, they live by simple sets of core principles, um, and then they just and they get deeper on those, and then they can spot the next thing and use it before it's the next thing, and uh, and exactly. always be ahead of the game. So, a perfect example of that is uh, Napoleon Hill, right? Um, Think and grow rich. Mm-hmm. Those are core principles. Mm-hmm. And how long ago was that recorded? It's like hundred years ago. Yeah, <laughs> hundred years, probably just over a hundred years ago, and people still live by and teach those exact same principles Dale Carnegie has a Dale Carnegie school or training school whatever yeah. same principles so it's just about taking what works and making it your own and then making it better yeah. that's what business is about yeah. right take what works and make it better yeah exactly and you've done that very very well thank you I'll, I'll, you, I'll feel better now after getting that bad review <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean look here it was like it was a what do you call it um, like a rotten tomato in a big in box a big of barrel fresh of happy tomatoes. Reviews, yeah. yeah, so I, I very gladly uh, That's right. put an well, amazing Well, here's, here's the thing too. Here's, here's the thing too. Uh, when you put yourself out there, no matter who you are or what you do, you you have criticize people yeah. who criticize. I love criticism. And it just criticism just means you've hit a mass of people where you're outside of your typical fans yeah. and you're outside of your close friends. And this and, goes back to your and book. And you're in the mass market. This goes back to your book. Yeah. You don't need everyone don't as need your client. Everyone. Yeah, I stop mean, trying to get everyone as your client. I mean, it's hilarious. You take the ultimate example. Bill Gates is giving away his entire fortune of $80 billion and he has people criticizing him for it. Uh, and you just sit there and you go... That just pisses me off, actually. Well, it just means when you, hit, when you hit a certain level, you have... I mean, Richard Branson has an entire, has a guy who's dedicated his entire life to writing books about how bad Richard Branson is. Um, he, you know, there is entire books about how Richard Branson's no good. And, um, and it just, literally, it just means that it, no matter who you are, if you hit a certain level, you will have an element of people who criticise. And it's very easy to criticise from the sidelines, you know, and you'd never say it, but, you know, you, you would tell anyone who's criticising if you're going to put energy into that sort of stuff go write your own book exactly you know go yeah. do something but anyway 
Yeah. Someone it's who's a, listening is going to criticise this podcast. Uh, yeah, we look forward to... Uh, we look please, forward to uh, your negative yeah, reviews. Yeah, yeah, if you are going to criticise, please do put it in the comment box below. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, thank you for your time and your energy. <laughs> now go invest it somewhere else. <laughs> go make your own podcast. Uh, so anyone wants to read that book, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you want to learn how to build a campaign-driven enterprise, a global enterprise, and have clients chasing you rather than you chasing clients, I highly, highly recommend it you can find his books on Amazon like I said before if you want to find out about the key person of influence program you can go to keypersonofinfluence.com if you want to find about Intrivo Daniel's uh, main business uh, it's intrivo.com and of course if you just want to follow Daniel you can follow him on Facebook Twitter uh, Instagram or just go to his website danielpriestley.com for the YouTube version of this I'll put it all uh, in the um, the description box I'll include all the links so before we finish I want to ask you a, a few little like uh, quick questions alright all right. <laughs> a few little cheeky questions yeah right? a few, little, the, che- few the... little cheeky questions alright what's your favourite way to keep fit oh, I hate you for asking this <laughs> <laughs> no f- pressure because I've trained okay, Daniel my, yeah my, my favourite way to, my favourite way to keep fit would be to do a session with you to be honest when I do a training session with you, it's it's like at a whole different level, and I realise how almost pointless it is not doing a training session with you, because you absolutely, I walk in, I crawl out, yeah. but I realise that unless I'm getting all the way to that level that you push me to, then it's, it's to- total immersion, total yeah, engagement. It's just unless I unless I have a session, if I have. If I've had a session with you, then everything else that I try and do for fitness feels like uh, a poor imitation. <laughs> a warm up, yeah. A warm okay, so that's an amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's very kind but of you. But outside fav- of that, outside of that, my favourite way to keep fit, if I could do it, would be skiing. to snowboard all day. Oh, snowboarding! A day yeah, of I snowboarding, so. a week of snowboarding, or two weeks of snowboarding, and by the end of that, I actually genuinely feel like my fitness is at a different level because I've had a week of snowboarding. Well, who knows? Maybe in a few years from now, you can rent a ski slope. Maybe. <laughs> and just go <laughs> and there. Feel light and, yeah, light. and feel light and white, yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, what do you think above everything? I know this probably, some might say this difficult question, but what's the one thing that holds entrepreneurs back? So people wanting to get into business. So budding entrepreneurs, the one uh, thing. Probably uh, the one thing that holds most entrepreneurs back is... <clears throat> Uh, thinking that they have to have internal clarity and internal credibility before. Sorry, apologies, we got cut off there. So that question was, what's the one thing holding entrepreneurs back? And Daniel's answer was... Yeah, uh, so there's a couple of things. Uh, Number one, feeling like you have to have this internal clarity all the time and know exactly what you're up to all the time and internal credibility or confidence all the time. And uh, mostly that's irrelevant. And then the other one uh, would be... Um, not having a good enough product. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs go out to market expecting it to be simple and business is a little bit complex and you need a few different products and they all have to be really good. Um, and you know, just taking your product a little bit better and a little bit better, uh, actually we live in a world where if you do really great things for your clients, your clients will go out and find your next clients. Yeah, I was actually, the reason why I asked you this question, that's a great answer by the way, the reason why I asked you the question is because I'm speaking in Ireland soon yeah. at, um, at Pro Beauty actually, yeah. you've spoken there, um, I think in, in the London, the London, London event, one, yeah. and I was, I was speaking about business and I, I, was, I asked myself that question, what's the one thing, and for me it was clarity, so you just... Well here's what I'd say about clarity, um, what people are looking for is to wake up one day and to have this ultimate clarity that never leaves them and that they feel like they would know what they were born to do on the planet. And they're waiting for that to arrive and they're waiting for it to be like a big bolt of lightning. Great entrepreneurs get a moment of clarity and then they leverage it for years. And even on days where they don't have clarity internally and even on days where they question themselves, they focus not on clarity for themselves but clarity for others. And they focus on being able to generate and help other people get clarity. I think the emphasis there is what you just, I was going to say and you just said the word, it's focus. It's what are you focused on. Yeah. So rather than focus on internal clarity focus on helping other people get clear yeah. the more you do for others yeah. the more you'll get in return yeah exactly okay next question <laughs> is it true that you once danced Gangnam style at your company Christmas party no no that's well, a I'm not I'm not confirming or denying <laughs> that. 
I, I will say this. <laughs> I will say that there's a, there's definitely a video out there somewhere mm. of someone who looks a lot like me dancing Gangnam <laughs> Style. And in a world of social media, one <laughs> silly, stupid Gangnam Style video and, <laughs> uh, everywhere. and it can haunt you forever. Yeah. If ever I go into a no, political it, career... It was class. Service. It was class. I was actually going to ask you, can you dance? And then I remembered that moment no, I and I was like, yeah. I, know, I have a better do you know question. I did, do you know I did six years of Latin Jive uh, I do know classes. that and I still find that I, absolutely I, incredibly yeah, I, funny. At one point, I was a really good Latin Jive dance. <laughs> uh, I, I could do a lot of Latin Jive. Uh, um, I knew the moves. Have you got flair? Uh, yeah, total flair. Yeah. I got, I got uh, substance and flair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, a little bit off subject, but not too serious. Have you ever, and I know the answer to this, have you ever pretended to be a gangster rapper? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, ever pretend? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, check it. Check it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, only when I'm delirious after a workout with you, basically. <laughs> when you, when you, or actually, I've figured out, I figured out with you that if I need a break midway through a workout, I have to say something funny that gets you laugh, yeah. laughing and distracted. And I've become a master at getting you distracted, yeah. so that well, I just get, make me laugh. so that I get yeah. a sixty-second or a ninety-second break yeah. in between. You well, you've punish. just you've just given away your strategy. Yeah, that now, is my so strategy. I'll see you next so week. So all of these things that you think you know about me <laughs> are only things that I've literally tried to to tell you to get a sixty <laughs> to get a sixty or a ninety-second breathing break in between. Yeah, the it's one of those. So JP, tell me, yeah. how's business? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I just come up with ways to try to distract you. <laughs> Um, actually, I think I've actually said, okay, that's you got me there. Like, you got me there, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. get back to the workout. Yeah. Uh, last question, uh, the ultimate question, what makes you happy? Uh, the thing that made me happiest was uh, letting myself makes, off. Makes, makes. Yeah, yeah, the thing that has made previously has, has the, the quick answer to that is what makes me happiest at the moment is spending time with my little boy. Um, the thing that has holistically made me happy, happiest is letting myself completely off the hook for feeling happy all the time. So I completely own the fact that it's totally okay, no matter who you are and what you do, to have moments of happiness and moments of yep. frustration and pissed off and depression or whatever it is. But that basically emotions are always up and down and trying to be happy all the time would be like, you know, trying to make the ocean always be flat and calm or, or yeah. always be you know to it's always impossible. be on top of a, it's impossible a so you know the strangest thing is is that you know I've had times in my life where I've been earning tons of money and been traveling around the world and you still have days where you think you know oh what's life all about and am I happy and all this sort of stuff and then you have days where happiness is effortless and I've had I've had times where I've had incredibly tough times in business and had moments where I'm laughing my you know laughing yeah. my ass off and having a great time struggling um, so even at the lowest moments, I've actually had great times of happy days. And even at the highest successful moments where you would think, oh, everything's happy every day, I've had times where I'm really frustrated and depressed. So the, I don't even question that anymore. What um, happiness is just a bit. Yeah, a bit of what? Uh, ha oh, happiness is just purely and simply just uh, a factor that will come and go no matter who you are. Yeah, I totally agree. And happiness, I think... I think one of the things that makes people depressed is an expectation that they're meant to be happy all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that makes people happy is an expectation that happiness is sometimes and to enjoy it while it lasts. I mean, for me personally, obviously, I coach people in happiness, you know, stem from health, like the root is, you know, oh, sort, out, yeah. sort out your home and, and then, you know, get more happiness in your life by taking care of... Yeah, holistically, if you're fit, you're going to be happy. Yeah, when I've let my fitness go is when happiness is harder. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better than that. But happiness is a practice. But not saying that you practice to be happy 100%. You're gonna have ups and the downs, but when you when you practice happiness and you're good at being happy, you know, you manage the downs. Yeah. So yeah. it's about enjoying the highs and yeah. just riding the lows out. And also enjoying the downs. Yeah. Do you know what's weird? I've had some of my best I I've had some of my best business ideas when I'm utterly frustrated and angry and yeah. pissed off and almost depressed. Um, when I when I'm not when I say depressed, I mean not like clinically depressed yeah, or yeah. anything like that, but actually like annoyed, frustrated, down. I've had some of my best 
time. So when I'm when I'm down, I love to wallow in it. I love to just go, fine, I'm going to go all in with being pissed off and frustrated. Um, I don't try and fight it. I just use it. And, um, and I know that I've had some of my best moments and my best ideas and my best breakthroughs when I've been frustrated. So and both you, are good. And would you agree, the reason why you're able to do that, because you know it'll always come to an end. Yeah. Uh, things things always get better in the end. Yeah, so when I was younger, I thought that having a down day might mean that you're going to have a down life. Or having a good day might mean that it'll last forever. What's wrong with me? Ah, what's <laughs> wrong? I've ruined my life. Um, or I've had a great day, so that's going to last forever. And now I have no doubt whatsoever that a good day is a good day and a bad day is a bad day and things will always keep going up and down no matter what I do. Life is a roller coaster. just no enjoy matter, the fucking ride. No matter what you do. Yeah. Um, and, and mind you, I'm friends with people who have made hundreds of millions of dollars. And they have good, good days and bad days. I, I know people who are unemployed, uh, living on people's couches, and they have good days and bad days. Everyone has good days and bad days. I just did a video the other day saying that you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. It's okay to fall. You're going to fall again and again and again. Just keep falling forwards as opposed yeah. to backwards. Because every time you fall, every time something happens, bad happens, you're always learning. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's been amazing. Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, sorry we went a bit over on this one. I like to keep the podcast episodes to under 30 minutes, but Daniel is a great man, an incredible friend of mine. So, yeah, naturally we just went, I could have gone we on and on away. and on and on, yeah. yeah. So I think we're going to continue to enjoy the sunshine. Thanks for listening in. Like I said, connect with Daniel, uh, get involved in the KPI method, uh, the Keepers of Influence method, buy Daniel's books, uh, do whatever you can to immerse yourself in this man because he is truly extraordinary and very inspiring. So it's been an absolute pleasure having you here, Daniel. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>